Hello, I'm Wander001, and yes, this is my review of the Essential Phone PH1 in 2018. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do a review of the Essential Phone uh, so close to the release of the next Pixel phone, you know, so Pixel 3, uh, right before the hot cell phone season? Well, my wife needed a new phone, her HTC One uh, review over there just started to boot lock and we needed a phone like pronto, but something that was decently spec for what she used it for. Thankfully, it died around Amazon's garage sale day, as I call it, and I was able to pick up the Essential phone reasonably cheap. Now, the Essential phone is actually the phone I was thinking about getting for myself back in 2017 before the Pixel 2 came out. There were a couple of reasons that I didn't get it. There were a lot of issues with the Essential Phone when it launched. Camera issues, software issues, the price being one big thing. Uh, but I'll talk about that a little later. This is the 2018 review. Now, just for some comparison before we actually start talking about the Pixel, the Essential Phone itself, here is the Pixel 2 sitting next to the Essential Phone PH1. It, the Pixel Phone is in a case and has a screen protector on it. I'll have a link over there. Uh, the Essential Phone right now is just sporting a screen protector. Again, link's in the corner. I do keep it in a case and again, link in the corner. So size comparison, this is not. This is talking about some of the specs that you can compare the two with just in case you're thinking, hey, maybe I will get a Pixel 2 when the Pixel 3 comes out to save a little money. Well, the essential phone here might be an option if you're looking to save a little money. So comparison, released in August of 2017, released in October of 2017. Both of them support, sport Gorilla Glass 5. Uh, the essential phone is a LCD panel as opposed to the AMOLED that's on the Pixel 2. Uh, both of them have the Snapdragon 835. The Essential Phone has 128 gigs of internal storage. That's all it has. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. The Pixel 2, you can get 64 or 128. This one has more space because neither of them have expandable storage. Both have four gigs of RAM. The Essential Phone has 3,040 milliamp battery to the 2,700 milliamp battery that's in the Pixel 2. Now, those are a quick comparison of the Pixel and the Essential Phone. So now let's talk about the Essential Phone. Construction-wise, and this is what a lot of people talk about, is that it's a very well-designed, beautiful, they, they throw it out a lot there, beautifully designed phone. Now, like I said, it has Gorilla Glass 5 on the front here, Around the sides, you have a titanium band that goes all the way around. And on the back, this really shiny back here is not glass. This is ceramic. Now, it looks awesome and what you know makes it look like a premium phone. However, it will scratch, or I'm sorry, the darker color will show scratches if it picks up scratches but it is a fingerprint magnet. It, it drives me nuts, but it lives in a case, so not that big deal. There is the Halo Gray version, which I'll be linking to down in the description area, which makes this a matte back, uh, still made of ceramic, but it's matte, so it doesn't collect fingerprints as well. So we're gonna come back to the front really quickly there. You can see just uh, that little notch up there because Essential Foam was the first to do a little cutout in the front. Coming to the side, you have the power button and the volume button. Now notice it's not a volume rocker, it's individual buttons. So that's that's a nice kind of step up feel. The only thing that drives me a little nuts is the power button is underneath the volume buttons. And I get it, it's a, it's a style choice. Thankfully, this isn't my phone, this is my wife's phone, but it drives me nuts that that's changed for positions. On the top of the phone, you have nothing because, well, there is no 3.5 millimeter jack on this, sadly. So if we come down to the bottom or side here, there's nothing. Bottom, you have your rear firing speaker, which I'm gonna tell you, this is one of the reasons that I didn't get it over the Pixel 2 because I wanted those front facing speakers, but this rear firing speaker is plenty powerful and not terrible at all. Uh, you have your USB C type port down there. Now coming over here, you have your, let's see if I can get this to focus because it's really shiny. All right, you've got a nano SIM tray and a mic. Do not use the nano SIM tool 
on the mic. I've seen lots of people say that they poked their microphone and screwed it up when they were trying to pop their SIM card out. This is the nano SIM, use this. You can tell because there's a little drawer around it. Now, coming back around to the back, you can see just from holding it for this review, the fingerprints that you will pick up. Here you have this magnetized area, which is for their modules. Now, really, they only have a 360 camera. I didn't pick it up because my wife doesn't need it and doesn't want it. Uh, there's supposed to be a 3.5 millimeter adapter that you can get from that, but I don't know when that's coming out or if it's coming out, but that's there. If you get the 360 camera in a bundle, you can use it. It's kind of cool. It has dual camera shooter on the back here. Uh, one is a monochrome, one is color, and then you've got your LED. It does have a fingerprint sensor in the correct location, makes it nice and easy. The one thing I will say about the fingerprint sensor, while it is responsive, they, they use the same finish that they did on the rest of the back, so it's kind of slippery. Uh, it doesn't have that tactile feel that I have on the Pixel 2. It's also a little flusher to the back than the Pixel 2s, so it's trickier to find if you don't have a case. Uh, the camera lenses are very flush, which is a nice thing. Now, quickly talking about what you get in the box, you get a USB to USB-C, so I'm sorry, USB-C to USB-C charging cable, which is braided. I have mixed feelings about braided cableage. It looks premium, but the question is how long will the braiding last? That's just a personal opinion. It also comes with a adapter because, well, like I said, it does not have a 3.5 millimeter jack, so you have your USB-C to 3.5 millimeter jack. So plug it in, you're good to go. The problem is you cannot charge while this is in. Shortcoming, something to think about. You also have the charging brick. This is a fast charger, so 27 watt USB-C charging brick. It's nice, it sits much flusher than a lot of charging bricks, but it is chunkier than a lot of charging bricks. So just food for thought, something to think about. While I'm still talking about the exteriors and so forth of the phone, uh, compared to the Pixel 2, I'm just gonna throw this out there. This is only supposedly IP54, and I had to go to the Essential website to find that out, uh, as opposed to everywhere else, they don't know what the IP is. So IP54, IP54 is going to give you limited protection against dust ingress and protection against splash from any direction, as opposed to the IP67 that you get with the Pixel 2, which pretty much means you're okay in any water type situation. So we're gonna start the device up by touching the fingerprint scanner on the back there. You'll notice just how responsive that actually is. And one of the first things I want you to notice is that the essential foam, which might not be as noticeable here, but if I touch down here, you'll notice that it is running Android P. And let's uh, kind of zoom in for effect here. The Essential phone is one of the few phones that actually has Android P aside from the Pixel phones. Now, the funny part is the Essential phone got the push for Android P before my Pixel did. So I don't know why that was, but that's a very cool thing that this does. Now, one of the other benefits of the Essential phone is no bloatware, no skins on top. This is as close to pure Android as you're gonna get. In fact, the only Extra setting is if we come down here to Essential and it's Usage and Diagnostics. That's the only extra thing that Essential has added to this phone. You are getting as close to stock Android as humanly possible with this. Now, there are a few things that the Essential phone got hit for when it first launched. And like I said, this is not when it first launched. This is 2018. I purchased this as a new phone. Uh, one of which was video playback. So if we come here and I have a YouTube video, all good to go here. Uh, my wife's channel, if you're interested over there. Uh, so because it has the camera bump right there, hopefully it's easy to see. Uh, by default, it will kind of put these black bars around the side, making it not a full screen, but you can pinch to zoom, which will right there, you can see kind of work its way around the cutout. So if you don't mind having a cutout, you can zoom in. If you like the black bars, you can leave it as standard. Now, there are a few complaints that my wife does have about the phone, one of which is it has a very 
weedy vibrate. Uh, so she says that it's not as strong as she would have liked it. The HTC One was a little better. It's a personal preference. I agree it's a little lacking, but again, for the size of the phone, that's kind of what you're gonna get. Now, the other big, big hit that the Essential Phone had when it first launched was its camera app. Now, I will admit, the camera app still isn't great. The pictures that it takes still are okay. Uh, so if you take a picture, you'll notice there is a very long delay before it goes. And we'll take a picture over there. Picture, wait, and there. So it's not instantaneous. It's, it's a bit of a delay. Fast shooters are gonna find that to be a problem. Now, it does have portrait mode, which is new to being able to do portrait mode on the rear-facing camera. Portrait mode was originally just for the front-facing camera. You can go to photo. You can go strictly black and white, and it's gonna use that monochrome camera in the back. So again, picture, wait, shows up. So there is a bit of a delay. There are other options that I'm not going to get into with the camera app itself. Just know the camera is acceptable for most as long as they're not using it as their primary shooter. Daylight and brightly lit situations, it's going to be a good performer. Low light is where it starts to run into some issues. But again, for my wife, she does not use it as her primary shooter. So the photos that she does take with it are perfectly acceptable for her. All right, so circling back, why talk about the Essential Phone almost at the end of 2018? It is still a good workhorse phone. And the reason that it is still a good workhorse phone is the internal specs that it has. The second thing that it has going for it right now is price. Price was the killer feature for me. I was able to pick this up on Amazon Garage Sale Day for $249. Normally, you'll be able to find this on Amazon for about $345. Official website, $400 from Essential. Now, there is the Halo Gray model, which I'll be linking down below, which is every day cheap on Amazon at $309. On the official Essential site, it's $500. I like the Halo Gray because it doesn't pick up fingerprints on the back. So if you're planning on not putting a case on this, I would go that route. So that, that's the thing. It's a cheap phone. Yes, it's last year's specs, but it was top specs with the Pixel 2. It's an unlocked phone. So you're getting an unlocked phone for that price. I mean, it's, it's hard not to recommend this phone. If you don't wanna wait for the next Pixel, three to come out and see what that does because the screen coverage on this is a lot better than what I was getting on the Pixel 2. Like, much better. You have to live with the uh, LCD, uh, LCD screen instead of the AMOLED, but those are just a few things. And again, my wife came from an HTC phone, which was an LCD panel. So for her, this is an awesome phone. So if you can look past some of those shortcomings and love that price, I highly recommend jumping on the Essential Phone PH1. The problem is Essential probably isn't gonna make a Essential Phone 2. They have been supporting the Essential Phone with security updates. And like I said, they upgraded to Android P much quicker than my Pixel did. So the question is how long will you get those updates for? You have to weigh the price to longevity. I think it's still worth a good buy. So, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below, and I will be sure to link to the Essential Phone Halo Gray version on Amazon, as well as put the full specs and write-up of the Essential Phone PH1 in the description area below. So, as always, thanks for watching.